Hi everyone, my name is Ray, or some of you might know me as Tiki with Ray, and today we are doing an episode of Tiki's with Ray. And I'm with my good buddy Travis, and um, you all know Travis, he's a famous Tiki carver, you've been on my show many, many times. Okay. The Tiki, that's <laughs> half, you know, half the Tiki's in my bedroom are from you. Well, that's true. It is, and um, one thing I've always, you've been collecting these these guys Ever since I've known you. And yeah, for a minute. And you're always on the search. Always on the search. That yeah. That's true. And like you find them at the weirdest places. And some of the times we're like, yeah, that, oh yeah, that's, well, like, well, we'll look at the, the one piece and I was like, oh, that's Marquisian, but you, would, you wouldn't even know it. So, I mean, is there a name for these little guys? These little tiki's? Um, uh, nay, I mean, they're, you know, most everything here is built for the tourist trade yeah uh, so you know they're so what, hold on what you're saying is per, everything just for the record everything here is like something that someone would buy and when something they, they visit could, one of these islands and they could fit it in there yeah and they could fit it in their suitcase and bring it back um, this one is probably a little bit more on um, the, the this guy? Papua New Guinea Piece yeah. right there, um, yes. probably more of, I would say, technically art than just a lowly tourist piece. But you know, that's uh, so. Was this? Did someone go to Papua New Guinea and like? Oh yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. I'm sure. Yeah. Where did you find it at, though? I found that at an auction. Um, for. A that was held down in Seattle. Um, yes, a good friend of um, Kim. Kim Wells. Yeah, um, and that was a piece I picked up uh, at that auction. Yeah, uh, I picked this piece. I picked up uh, this. I believe is a bookend. This Marquesas bookend right here. Right here. Yeah. Um, yes. And I'm I'm pretty sure that's what that is is a bookend. Wait, is, it, is this made out of wood? Yeah, yeah, for sure. This isn't a tiki exactly. Yeah. But two blocks down the street, at an estate sale, I picked up this Papua New Guinea drum that Whoa. still has its leather top on it, and I may have paid three dollars for it. Three dollars? Yeah, I mean. I got that, and I've got that. It was the last day of the um, estate sale, and lizard skin. Uh, yes, lizard skin, and um, it had gotten cracked in shipping, and so yeah. I figured I couldn't wreck it anymore. Yeah, this big crack down here, yeah. Yeah, and it was already kind of wrecked, so I brought it home, and with hide glue... I rigged up a system go. that uh, I could squeeze this together and close up that crack yeah. and keep it from, you know, breaking apart worse. Yeah. But, um, so I got this and I got that Rapa Nui cloth map on the wall over there. A couple blocks, three blocks down the street there at an estate sale. And I just happened in to see what was left, and this was in a little pile. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I snagged it right up. When it comes to, like, the full-size tiki's, ones that are, like, several feet tall. Yeah, yeah. Were they still, like, like souvenirs that people would buy? Um, or were like I would, So I, you couldn't fit one of those in your, in your... No, you have to ship that. Yeah. Um... At a local antique store in town, um, someone had gone to the South Pacific yeah. and just brought back, uh, I would say, more art yeah. type things. And, that makes uh, sense. So, so, so a lot of the reason why I'm asking is like, so if you see like full size tiki's. 
they were probably bought back by a, by a buyer or a, an art is someone yeah well no to, i mean you could i mean as a tourist with money walk into wherever they were selling them and yeah and it's not something you fit in your suitcase that's for sure yeah. you uh have it professionally shipped and that sort of stuff because yes yeah. Um, like I was going to say at this antique store with a bunch of the stuff um, that I bought that was part of the same lot yeah there was a large and when I say large this high yeah Marquesas Tiki carved out of stone oh that uh, they the people Hosting the sale, um, said that it costs like twelve grand to ship back. Yeah, because it's, it's a stone. freaking it's a freaking stone boulder. Yeah, well, I mean that's what I'm saying. Like to ship back a tiki, like at any point in time, it's probably never cheap. You know, right? Hence the reason why you you see a lot you, of these. You find a lot of these that you can fit in your yeah. suitcase. But part of that same, uh, the person whose uh, estate stuff that was. Yeah. Uh, they had a lot of um, Rapa Nui stuff, Easter Island stuff. Yeah. So, for example, um, these Very three, iconic. Yep. These three pieces. Yeah. Uh, no, wait, that's... This uh, Birdman uh, statue. Okay. Um, the Moai, obviously. Yeah. Uh, this Kava Kava Man statue, oh. also was part of that um what else this gorget was part of that as well and it took me looking through my art books but this would have been worn around the neck as a sign of rank can i see that yeah for sure um well it's not the lightest thing i'll tell you that no and i don't know how true to size that would be uh, to actual ancient ones um, but yeah and I've, I remember reading I think the bigger the ones the more prominence you had and that piece also came with that same group um, and I also picked up a couple of pieces of top of cloth and this Marquesas Island mask yeah so I bought all that in one group and it was part of this sale. And the story behind that was uh, I frequented this um, antique mall. It was fairly new. Um, I had made friends with the ladies who ran it. And yeah. one day I was in there, and we were shooting the breeze, and one of the older ladies asked me to help her carry a couple boxes downstairs. And so yeah. I carried the box downstairs, and I saw this sticking out of a box, this face. And I was, what is going on? And she said, we're getting ready for the next estate sale. Yeah. Which they would hold down in the basement. And... I quickly got the details of when it was going to be, yeah. and the next day took that day off work, scheduled that day off work, so that I would be the first person in the door. <laughs> I kid you not. And I'd, I only saw this. I had no idea what else was coming in. Um, oh, the big stone Marquesas one was upstairs as well at that time. Yeah. Plus a Shogun Samurai full life-size armor. Yeah. But that's not the story. Anyway, and <laughs> so I took the day off on that morning. I got up super early, uh, went there an hour before, um, and got my little coffee and waited so I could get in line to get my number of where I would be going and what place I would be going into this yeah. amazing estate sale. Um, and I'm sitting there and no one's there. And I sit there another half an hour and no one's coming. And I'm 
Like, yeah. I don't know what's going on. So I get out of my car and walk across the street and see a sign on a piece of paper on the door saying, essentially, due to a rift with the actual owner of the store, ah. the sale is canceled and we do not know when the store will open again. Goodbye. And You took I, a day off of work for this. I took... Well, I took a day off work, but I wanted to get in on these things. Oh my God, Travis. <laughs> so, uh, it was, I would go by and check occasionally, and the day, uh, it was a day, if you remember, you and I were going yep. to Red Rum, Yep. and on our way out of town... Yep. I said, hey, can we stop by this antique mall? Oh, that's this story. Yeah, that's okay. That's this story. Yeah. And so we pulled over on our way to Red Rum up in Bellingham. Yeah, the antique shop's actually downtown, downtown Everett. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, they were open, which was, you know, it had been a month since, they, since they'd been open. But yeah. not only that, the actual owner was in there. And so with some talking... We got to go down to the basement yes, we did. where this stuff was. And they had it all laid out. And, and it was a lot. I am forever appreciative of you because you stood there and chatted up the guys while I just grabbed a bunch of stuff, <laughs> I grabbed all these things, and yeah. you kept them distracted. And then and then you just... walked out the door <laughs> without paying for them. No, 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 no. You didn't do that. You didn't. I picked that up at the same time. This Antique one here? Mall later, and I wonder if that was just part of the same lot that they had that uh, was stuck in a, I don't know, um, a back room or something. It's possible. I don't know. But I picked that up almost a year later. Yeah, just find them. Random places. A lot of thrift store things. Uh, this Solomon Islands Canoe Prow, I found. Solomon Islands? Yep. Yeah. This would go on the front of their canoes. Uh, or, you know, that's obviously not one, but one. Yeah. A, that similar shape would go on the front of their canoe. Now, is this Cook Island? Yes. And um, I picked that up recently at a thrift store. This Hawaiian one yeah. behind you is probably the first one I bought when we moved to Everett in 2012. Yeah. And I happened to walk into St. Vincent de Paul one day, and um, it was a Monday. Yes. And I saw it. I immediately grabbed it, and I was going to buy it, and I didn't care how much it was. And it was half-price blue tag day. And, of course, it had a blue tag, so I... So what did you get it for? I had $7. Oh, and... my God. <laughs> Is this coup? That is, yeah, that's a coup. Yeah, this and is coup. This coup, right? And that's coup. Yes. Right. But all vastly different interpretations. Yeah. And this one, um, I think, is red wing pottery. Yeah, this is a um, wood. Yeah, that's definitely. But that was for a hot minute the first. Uh, that was the biggest tiki I had for yeah. a while. <laughs> the only one that we didn't talk about yet is this one here. That was also at that um, tiki estate sale down in Seattle. The the Mungo sale. And what is this? Uh, um, I actually don't know. I don't know either. I think it is... Um, I mean, I've seen that tiki before. Right. Well, it's like Hawaiian Eye is like kind of similar. Kind of, yep. It is With of the that TV style show. and probably of that era. Well, what, how I want to end this video is I think it'd be very information, informational. If we just kind of, kind of gave like a little what to look for, you know. Like, okay, for example, coup, right? Let me, um, so this is... That's a fairly standard. Coup. Yeah, it's a pretty, no, like actually get the yeah, put, get your big guy over here again. Okay. Yeah, there you go. This one. So you know, coup. How would you describe this guy? You're always get, what is this? 
Um, it's always going to uh, have this. this it's this head headdress. lower headdress. Yeah. Um, and the eyes are usually yeah shut and a big mouth. The, the big angry mouth. Yes. Um, and your other Hawaiian figures uh, like Kanaloa and Lono. Yeah. They're going to have the taller. Yeah. Headdresses. Yeah, Lono's going to have a really, really tall headdress. Right. And there's and um, and the and these are all for, for Hawaiian, correct? Island tiki's. Yes. And that's the that's always a misconception that a lot of people that again they get into tiki that they think, you know, it's just Hawaii, but it's not. It that's just one part of a Polynesia. Right. But usually Hawaiian tiki's are going to kind of look like this. There's going to be the big mouth, the big open, and um, usually some kind of a headdress. Mm -hmm. So let's see if we want to put that over there. Yeah. Easter Island, Rapa Nui, is this guy. And um, if you're our age, your introduction to the, to, the, to, the, to the Easter Island Moai was from In Search Of. <laughs> uh -huh. <laughs> At least it was for me. I remember, like as a kid, like in the '70s, seeing those and like, what the hell's going on with yeah. those things? <laughs> and they, and they were, and it's this. I mean, it's so. I love the fact when I got into tiki that it's like that. This would be that. So this would be considered tiki because I just thought they were so cool. And like some of the some of my moai mugs are my favorite mugs that I have. And um, again, the interesting thing is, fun fact is, you know, again back in the '70s, a lot of the heads were like, you know, here's the ground, right. And then what they realized is they actually dug underneath, and then they did have bodies. Yes, like that. Do you have any Maori? There's no no Maori stuff here. Um, all my Maori stuff is very small. I bought this one at a previous antique store in town, and it's was missing one of the shell eyes, and so I had an abalone button, and I carefully traced the um, end of a pencil yeah. eraser on this shell and carefully used a Dremel tool to cut it out. Great job. And glued in there. And now I can't remember which one I did. I mean, probably could, if I stared at it long enough, I could remember. But And the, um, the first tiki, well, the tiki that I bought from you was Mari. Yep. And um, how you can tell Mari is... Um, Tattoos. Yes. There's going to be a lot of a lot of tattooing on the face, and there's usually going to be eyes like she said, like just like you said with the eyes, and I think in all of these the eyes are, you know, the shell. And yeah. actually, if you want really good this all this stuff behind us yeah. is Maori stuff. Yeah. So it's all about and one other thing too is a lot of times the tongue. The tongue will be sticking out. Yeah. And not like in, and the idea is that, you know, like it's the war, the war chant. The idea mm -hmm. is that they, to make that, this face that like big eyes, big mouth and big, yep. to, to scare their opponents. Yes. And, um, and this is, and the interesting thing about this, and this is where things get a little tricky is like, you know, we're talking about the eyes, but then when you get into the Marquesian, let's just use okay. this for example. They got big eyes, mm -hmm. but they're absolutely different. But it's different. Like the eyes are more like bug-eyed, mm -hmm. almost alien-like. Yeah, and that's one of the things I like about them. Honestly. Yeah, and um, another thing too with the with the um, with the Marquesian is that the mouth is usually well, the head's usually kind of almost like egg-like, and the mouth is real kind of. Um, I don't want to say cartoonish, but that's kind of like the word that's kind of coming to me. It's like, like, it, like at first blush, it's almost like Spider-Man meets Venom, sort of. <laughs> mm -hmm. Because when I was first getting into it, I'd always get the Maori and the Marquesians mixed up. But, but now that I know, it's like, it's definitely, there's definitely something different going on with both of these. Papua New Guinea, the masks, you, I mean, if you're looking at the masks, how would you describe these? 
Um, I mean, a lot of detail, right? Yeah, a lot of detail. A um, lot of use of color. Uh, yes. If you notice the two Papua New Guinea masks on the wall, yeah, um, they are seashells. Uh, yeah, a lot of cowrie shells. Very um, colorful. And kind of, and they're, and it's one of those things because there, there's a lot of different styles to the Papua New Guinea masks. Right, but once on you which region, yeah, and but from. once you see them though, you 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 know then, right, not not African, right, but a Papua New Guinea, and that mask over there, I really schooled the guy selling it on the fact that of all the masks he had up there, that one was not African. Yeah. The other ones were. <laughs> yeah. And he insisted that the ladies who sold them to him said they were all African. And you're like, but yeah. for that matter, uh, I picked that up on Craigslist for $24 yeah. as an African mask. So That's, that's complete in my <laughs> Yeah. <exactly. laughs> so there you go. There, That's a little... Um, a little bit of a, a primer in like different tiki statues that you can buy. And here's the thing. Um, if you see any of this stuff out and about, like at a Goodwill or an antique shop and the price is decent, just get it. Just get it. Just get it. And um, because if not, if you don't like it, Travis will buy it off. Yeah, you. seriously. <laughs> want to support the tiki with ray show and look cool doing it at the same time then head over to tiki with ray.com and buy yourself a tiki with ray shirt they're only twenty dollars tony canapa did the design and they're screen print in america